Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Battle. I am Ajinkyo. In this video, I am going to help you to understand how you can prepare for group discussion. Now definitely whenever you are preparing for group discussion, first thing you need to understand what are the rules of group discussion? What are the do's and don'ts of group discussion? So in this session, I will be covering all the possible doubts which you may have related to group discussion. I can assure you, once you go through this complete session, then you don't need to go for any other resource to check how to prepare for group discussion. Now, one thing you need to understand whenever you are preparing for GD, two things come. One is rules, which I'm going to cover in the session. And next is practice. In the future sessions, I'll be covering various practice sessions for the group discussion to get all the updates related to that. And as well as for all the placement preparation material and related to job updates, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be posting a lot of updates through our channel and make sure you are clicking on the bell icon as well. So now let's start with the group discussion session. Now whenever any company takes group discussion after aptitude test or some companies take directly group discussion or even if you want to appear for any MBA colleges they will have group discussion as a part of selection process. Now most of you will be already aware about the skills which they take for the group discussion. Now group discussion can be considered as a mass elimination round as well like aptitude test. Like suppose if there are 10 students who are sitting for the group discussion, maybe company will choose one or two candidates for the further interview. So you can say uh, around 8 students like 80% of the students will get eliminated from the group discussion. So it is very important for you to differentiate yourself with the skills which you have in group discussion to crack that GD and appear for the interview. So generally which skills company check during group discussion, let's check that. Definitely communication skills, they will check whether you are adaptable to team environment, whether you respect others opinion, whether you are having leadership skill to manage a group, whether you are having problem solving skills to work on particular problem statement. Also very important thing which they check during GD is about listening skills, whether you are the only one who is speaking in GD or you are respecting others opinion as well that they will be checking and ultimately convincing skill will be checked. So definitely there are some more skills which they will be checking throughout the GD but these are the major skills which they will look for. Now I will cover which type of topics you are going to face during GD. Definitely some general topics will be there. Maybe you can say definitely there will be some general topics. Let me give you some examples. Maybe climate change. Maybe we can say our technology is creating unemployment. Okay, or maybe social media, there will be some controversial topics as well where they will be checking whether you have enough skills to manage any difficult or critical situations. Controversial topic can be anything like maybe communal clashes or maybe related to political. Okay, it can be anything. Now problem statement based, these are uh, rarely asked we can say. They will provide you some case study or problem statement. You will be given maybe 2-3 to three minutes to prepare for that and then they will ask you to discuss on that particular topic. Okay. Then there can be abstract topics as well. Maybe like rainbow or they will give you a color red and discuss on this. Usually the topics which you are going to face during campus placement mostly it will be from general category. In future session, I will be sharing a list of new topics as well which you can prepare for campus placement preparation. These are the topics which are usually asked. Now let me start with the doubts which students usually have with the group discussion. I will be starting from very basic. I will start from very basic doubts and I will make sure that I am clearing all the possible doubts which you may have related to group discussion. So let's start. Now as we know, group discussion can be divided in three parts. Introduction part of GD, then maybe we can say the middle part and then the conclusion part. Okay, so we are going to check all the questions related to it. Now the first question, what is the normal duration of GD? Now you can consider the normal duration of group discussion is 8 to 10 minutes. Now it depends on the company's time requirement. If they are having more time, they may go for 10 to 12 minutes. If the company is not having enough time but they want to conduct GD, they may give you just 5 to 6 minutes and then they will ask you to discuss for that particular topic. But the normal duration is 10 minutes. Next question, how many panel members are there to evaluate? Usually there are 1 to 2 panel members depending on that company. Next. Is there any time given for the preparation after the topic is given and before the GD? Usually some time is provided like one minute or two minutes to collect the thoughts on that particular topic but there could be instances when this does not happen. So it is best not to depend on this. Next question. Should I address the panel or the group members? Don't ever make the mistake of addressing panel members. The group discussion is between you and other members, not the panel members, like not with the evaluators. 
you even must avoid looking at the panel members when the GD is in progress. Okay, it is very important. You, you just need to make sure you are looking at your group members only. You should not look at evaluator. Next question. How many members are there in group discussion? Ideally, you can say 10 members for a group discussion. But if the company is having less time, they may ask 12 to 15 members to be a part of one single group. So it may become difficult for some of the students to differentiate themselves in a group of 12 to 15. Next, what is the seating arrangement like for the group discussion? Now it depends. It could be semicircular or circular or, or sitting alongside a rectangular table depending on the venue. It is best not to worry about such issues on which you don't have any control. How should I address the other group members? If you are initiating the discussion, you could do so by collectively addressing the group as friends. If the group has had a round of self introduction prior to starting the discussion and if you remember the names of your friends, then you can use it or simply you can use the pronouns like he or she whenever you are mentioning any point. Next question. Are we allowed to carry a piece of paper during the group discussion for noting down the important points? Normally you are, but there may be some instances when it is specifically forbidden to carry a paper. Will there be some extra points for introduction and conclusion? Yes, definitely. You need to understand if you do a proper introduction to that particular topic or even you can say conclusion. Like introduction is about setting a tone or setting direction about that particular topic. If you do it perfectly, definitely you are going to get some extra point. But if you are doing just for the sake of doing introduction, definitely you are not going to get some points that you need to understand. Introduction is about giving a direction. It should not be just like, okay, good afternoon everyone. Today we are here to discuss this particular topic. What is your opinion? If you're asking any of your friend, you must add some valid points to that particular introduction and then you need to open that particular group discussion and then and then only you will get some extra points. Now you may face one question like when I should decide or how I should decide whether I want to do introduction of this particular GD or not. Now definitely it depends on the topic. If you know some good quality points or valid points about that particular topic, then you must start that particular GD. You can use some proper templates. Okay, like good afternoon everyone. Today we are here to discuss this particular topic. You can use some phrases. Later on what I will do, I will share some phrases which you can use for the different situations in group discussion. Now, next question. Should we begin the group discussion by appointing a leader amongst ourselves? No, you should not do that. You can show your leadership skills whenever you are discussing in a group, but no one should be appointed as a leader for group discussion. Next, should we distribute the total time available to all the participants to ensure that everybody gets a chance to speak? Since a GD is not a debate or elocution, the participant should not resort to the strategy of distributing time. You should not distribute the time that you need to understand. Whoever is having enough skills to participate in a GD at any point of time should speak. How much or for how long should I participate? Now this is very important question. Considering a 10 minute group discussion and if there are 8 to 10 participants, I would recommend you should try and participate at least 3 to 4 times and the duration can be at least 25 to 30 seconds. Now, but if you are preparing for campus placement preparation group discussion and whenever that GD is going to happen, everyone is going to speak in that GD. You need to understand it is going to be a matter of maybe 3 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, depending on company. So no one is going to miss that particular chance. So it may happen in actual group discussion during campus placement interview, you may get chance only once or twice. So in that case, you need to describe your point at least 50 to 60 seconds. So it depends on the type of competitors or students or participants you are having in that GD. But ideally, in a normal situation, you can say it should be 3 to 4 times at least 30 seconds. If we do not understand the meaning of topic, should we ask the moderator or evaluator to explain it to us? No, you should not ask about the meaning of topic to moderator, never. Instead of doing that, it is better to wait for some other participants to explain the meaning of that topic. So listen to that particular discussion carefully for the first few minutes. And when you figure out, okay, what exactly is the topic, then you can start participating in the discussion. Now, one thing you need to understand, most of the students are having a fear that I am not good in English communication skills. Maybe my grammar is also lacking and I don't understand this topic as well. So what should I do in such situation? One thing you need to understand, suppose if you are not having confidence about your English skills, so what you will do? 
you will remain silent in that particular group discussion you will not speak anything so what will be the result of that group discussion is that evaluator going to select you definitely not so you need to understand rather than staying silent and getting rejected at least try to speak at least try to perform and then check what is the result so one thing you need to understand you should never remain silent in group discussion that is very important okay maybe some companies will like your trying attitude and they will select you based on that okay we don't know exactly what evaluator is going to think okay so if he or she likes your trying attitude he or she may select you next question should we address the other participants by their names or assign numbers as far as possible you should try and avoid names or numbers it is better to use pronouns such as he she or you okay while referring to the members of group if i feel strongly about an issue should i voice my feelings it is important to be cool and emotionally objective in a group discussion if you react emotionally you are likely to lose control over yourself during the group discussion you have to be calm and logical and not emotional in group discussion now next question is very important should i take a stand in group discussion stand means like a side okay suppose the topic is online shopping or traditional shopping so should i say only online shopping is better or should i say like traditional shopping is better now you may have gone through various group discussion sessions online or in like traditional learning according to me you should never take a stand in group discussion let me explain you why okay one thing you need to understand this is not a debate there is a difference between group discussion and debate in debate they will provide you one side or maybe you can say stand like you should only speak with respect to maybe online shopping and the other side will speak in terms of traditional shopping okay but in group discussion one thing you need to understand whenever you are speaking about any topic it should be logical and you should be from both the sides group discussion is nothing but like a meeting in your office suppose you are working with your manager manager is asking about the positive and negative points about one particular product okay in a group discussion manner it is not necessary to tell the points from one side only so one thing you need to understand whenever they will give you any topic you should think from both the perspectives but one thing you need to understand which is very important you should speak in such a way where evaluator will not feel like you are changing the sides continuously let me give you an example suppose if i am saying okay online shopping is very good and immediately if i start telling that evaluator or my group members okay traditional shopping is also very good then evaluator may feel that you are not sure about your thoughts so what to do or how you need to speak in such situations let me tell you suppose if you are introducing one particular topic like online shopping or traditional shopping you can introduce it like hello everyone good afternoon today we are here to discuss about one particular topic which is online shopping or traditional shopping as the coin is having two sides this topic is also having two sides there are some positives and negative points about both the sides online and traditional shopping let us discuss one by one now one thing you need to understand suppose if you have told all the positive points about online shopping till now and if you want to move to the positive points of the second side which is traditional shopping you should mention it like till now i have discussed all the positive points about online shopping now there are some positive points about traditional shopping as well let us discuss that so the phrases are very important which you are using to connect your sentences if you don't use the phrases then it will be really bad impression on evaluator that you are changing the sides but in group discussion you need to balance both the sides which is very important so whenever you are preparing for group discussion whenever you get a time of 1 or 2 minutes for preparation during the actual gd what you need to do create two columns on your paper like positive points or negative points or advantages or disadvantages and then think in that manner okay don't immediately change the side at least maybe you can start with positive point or negative point for first 3 to 4 minutes and then you can change the side by using some phrases okay now let us discuss some negative points or positive points about this particular topic it is very important to sound or give impression of a logical person who can think from the both the perspectives and then come to conclusion even you can imagine a situation suppose if you take one particular side okay like online shopping is better and later on if group decides traditional shopping is better then in that case it will be a problem for you so that is also the reason you should not take a particular side you should mention positive and negative point about both the situations i hope this is clear
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कैन आई यूज टेक्निकल टर्म्स और जागन विच इज क्लियर टू मी बट नॉट टू द ग्रुप इफ यू हैव टू यूज एनी टेक्निकल टर्म्स ओके प्लीज डू नॉट यूज एब्रीविएशन आफ्टर मैंशनिंग द टर्म इन फुल टेक द टाइम टू एक्सप्लेन इट टू द ग्रुप वॉट इट मीन्स it is quite likely that other participants of the group have a different academic background from you and you should make sure you are all on a level playing field so make sure you are explaining all the terms which you are using for a group discussion do i begin my participation by requesting the group's permission to do so it is not likely that you will get a chance to ask for such permission it may also go against you okay as appearing weak on your part how do i participate in a group discussion when the noise level is too high you could try following some strategies like identify the most powerful speaker in a group note down the points that he or she is trying to make the moment the noise level reduces a little enter supporting as a powerful speaker you will have made a strong ally or you can say friend who will carry you through that particular noise so it is about the strategies which you will learn whenever you are practicing gd do i have to be cautious about other participants feeling on sensitive issues like religion or caste etc yes definitely insensitivity to others displays a lack of maturity it will act against your fear so make sure you are respecting other participants feeling as well now important question how critical is my fluency in english to my performance command over english is certainly advantageous but will not compensate for the lack of good content so if your content is good then even if your english might not be great you must pick it out rather than restricting yourself by the lack of good english you will get credit for the content or you can say your ideas is it good to be humorous in gd depends on the situation in a group discussion that is fairly relaxed it may be acceptable but in a competitive situation where the participants are tensed up your attempts at humor may fall flat now this is very important question what do i do if someone else has already said what i wanted to say now in this situation definitely you are having two choices one is agree with the point made by the person and add on it by displaying the applicability maybe using some examples by doing this you will have broaden the scope of that particular point or and second choice can be drop that particular point and think of fresh points now one thing you need to understand why you are facing such situation where whatever you have thought okay initially others are already speaking that this is because you are trying to enter in a group discussion very late now if you want to enter in a group discussion maybe at 7th or 8th minute okay in a gd of 10 minutes that entry should be superb that you need to understand maybe you can say it should be like a rajnikanth entry that everyone is checking okay what exactly he or she is trying to speak but if you are not sure about it okay so to avoid getting into such situation then what you need to do do speak up in first 2 to 3 minutes of the group discussion if your wait is longer it is almost clear that someone would have spoken your points to avoid that make sure you are speaking in first 2 to 3 minutes and then again you are giving time to yourself to think for the new points can i use a language other than english to drive home my points no you need to speak to english okay if you are having some phrase okay which you can tell it in maybe your regional language but later on you need to translate the meaning or summary in english is it true that the person who speaks the most in group discussion is the one who is most successful this is a myth generally the person who has a sound knowledge of the topic and is clear thinker speaks more this leads to the students into believing that whoever speaks the most is successful but just speaking for the sake of speaking will not take you far that you need to understand you need to give chance to others as well to speak because ultimately it is a group discussion suppose if i have a lot to say on the topic should i say all of it you would not be looked upon favorably if you kept speaking all the time and did not listen to anyone else contrary to the misconception the person who talks the most is not necessarily the one who is judged as the best the quality and not the quantity of your contribution is the success factor should i encourage others to speak up it depends on the situation some students may think that it will show your leadership skills but again it depends on the situation because do not directly put someone who is consistently silent on the spot by asking him or her to speak up if someone has been trying to speak 
and has a good point but is cut off constantly you may encourage him or her to continue okay with their point but when you should encourage others when you have already spoken maybe two to three points and then you can show your leadership skills are the group members supposed to keep track of the time or will the panel keep track it would be good if you are conscious of the time but not to the point of getting so distracted looking at your watch that you do not contribute to the discussion in a group discussion of 10 minutes after 9 minutes evaluator will tell you to conclude that particular gd can i add some statistics to my discussion definitely statistics or any particular reference will help you to put your point but make sure you are not creating your own statistics many times some students speak like okay randomly okay 80% of the students do this or maybe 90% of students do this if they ask you about any particular reference okay from where you have got that particular statistics and if you are not able to provide some references to it it will be really bad impression so make sure whenever you are using statistics okay if they ask you for the reference you should be able to tell that maybe you can take example if the topic is maybe population of india is like advantages or disadvantages you can say like we are almost having 65 percentage of the population which is under 35 age so these type of statistics will help but don't create your own statistics is it necessary that a group should arrive at a conclusion in the stipulated time now as we have discussed initially there are three parts one is introduction maybe you can say for 1 minute then the discussion general discussion of 8 minute then after 9 minutes evaluator will tell you to conclude now what is a conclusion conclusion is you need to understand it is not your individual conclusion it is group conclusion so whenever you are doing a conclusion you can start it like on the behalf of my group i would like to conclude or there are some different phrases also which i will be sharing later on in conclusion you should speak from both the perspectives as we have discussed earlier if you have noted down the point or opinion of your friends you can mention it that as well in conclusion you should never add a new point it is very important you should repeat or summarize all the points which you have spoken earlier conclusion should be done by only one candidate if one candidate is not able to do the conclusion in proper way that does not mean you should again do a conclusion if evaluator gives a chance to do conclusion again then you can do it but you need to understand conclusion should be done only one time now this question is it necessary that a group should arrive at conclusion in the stipulated time ideally a group is supposed to reach a conclusion but normally the time constraints do not allow a group to do so okay so suppose again let me take a example of online shopping and traditional shopping and if you want to do a conclusion of that topic it can be like on the behalf of my group i would like to conclude like we have discussed some positive points and negative points about online and traditional shopping these are the positive points which we have discussed so you can mention it one by one these are the points which we have discussed from traditional shopping and then ultimately it depends on the time availability of customer and his budget whether to choose online shopping or traditional shopping so the conclusion can be like this it should be up to 1 minute what do i do if one member is very stubborn and aggressive you could use any of the method like ignore him and address the other members of the group or be assertive and tell him that his argument is faulty point out to him that his point is well taken and the group must progress further by discussing the ideas presented by others what are the acceptable ways of interrupting someone else so that i may make my point you can interrupt like excuse me but i feel that you are saying is not universally true or yes i may agree with your idea i would like to add a point to it yes i think you are right when you say that but could you clarify what if so there are different phrases which you can use later on i will create a separate videos in which i will mention all the phrases which you can use depending on the situation so these are the general doubts which are usually asked by the students related to group discussion now let me quickly tell you what are the parameters are evaluated during a group discussion by evaluator and how the marks are divided suppose if i want to evaluate out of 100 marks then then content subject knowledge will get 30 percentage like 30 marks creativity and originality of points will get 5 marks your voice tone and pitch will get 5 marks your body language posture eye contact will get 10 marks 
analytical ability whether you are able to conclude properly or whether you are able to do proper analysis of that topic will get 5 marks fluency will definitely have 5 marks if you are taking initiative like maybe introduction or conclusion will get 5 marks your leadership skills will get 10 marks your group behavior will get 15 marks enthusiasm will get 5 marks and listening skills will get 5 marks so this is how usually the marks are distributed whenever group discussion is evaluated. So I hope now you are clear with all the do's and don't about group discussion. I'll be creating new videos related to different topics of group discussion, different phrases which you can use during group discussion. In case of any doubt about group discussion, make sure you are commenting on this particular video. If you like this particular video, then click on the like button. To get all the placement related updates, click on the subscribe button and do click on the bell icon to get all the notifications related to our updates. Do share this particular video with your friends. You can create a group of 5 to 10 members of your friends for a group discussion and daily you can take one particular topic and discuss on it. In case of any doubts, feel free to contact us. Thank you.